public. You want to talk about male body shaming? Should I be ashamed? Because I feel no shame. For the last couple of weeks, we've seen the very public destruction of Steven Crowder. If you've missed it, this guy, a supposed comedian who runs a far-right-leaning YouTube grift, recently revealed that he had been dealing with a divorce from his wife over almost the last year and a half. Divorce is a rough thing to go through, regardless of how much of a shitty person you are. And I'm not here to tell you that Steven Crowder deserves to be publicly named and shamed because of his personal relationship failings. However, if that same person had routinely, let's say, gone on national television promoting his views on relationships and sexuality and what in his opinion leads to good marriages, then you might say that it's pertinent for us to examine him. After all, if the man selling you a car based on its reliability has four versions of that same car all broken in his driveway, you might be understandably upset. So when we see clips like this... But the second you mention abstinence, people, they pucker with discomfort. Like, oh no, we can't talk about this. And you're vilified as it's judgmental. It's not... A... Statistically, it's the healthiest thing to do. It is conducive towards a better marriage by a 25% spread, both physically... It only takes physically... that one person, though. And read words like this... It's easy to feel a certain type of discomfort about who Steven is and what he's selling to young people, especially when we contrast it with the reality. Because then, when we see clips like this... Because you can't have any discomfort. Yeah. yeah. There you go. You throw your hand, you give up so easily. I don't give up so easily. You, know, you give up so easily. I, I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline or respect. You said, then we're at an impasse. Steven, no, we are at an impasse, okay? I love you, but Steven, Steven, your abuse is sick. Watch it. Sick. Watch it. Fucking watch it. I'm gonna let go. I'll get what you need. Hillary, you're creating this. If you had more discipline, if you had more respect, if you did your wifely duties, if you right, it's this very linear, like in his mind, very systematic breakdown of all of her poor behaviors and how she has created this situation. In his mind. He is being accurate, precise, and elevated. But the reality is, he is totally emotionally unregulated. And we read words like this. We change from feeling uncomfortable to downright disgusted. Here is a man claiming to know what types of relationships will and won't succeed by gauging your potential success on how much of a harlot your wife was before you got married. And he also happens to think that it's perfectly acceptable to tell his pregnant wife that he will quote-unquote fuck her up. But here's the thing. It's easy to dunk on Steven Crowder for being a piece of shit person and also a spouse abuser. And it's even easier to maybe make fun of him for being a confused little man-child that doesn't know how to have a normal relationship with his quote-unquote friend, Ben Shapiro, who also wanted to pay him $50 million. And much less so with his wife, who merely birthed his twin children, and more disgustingly, somehow she allowed this man to touch her body. And we could spend hours pointing out all the ways in which this dehydrated turd mixed with radioactive goo and reanimated into a cardboard cutout of American playing the role of a sex offender on the internet for money is such a piece of garbage. That would be easy to do. The harder thing to do would be to wonder, what role and responsibility do we have to take for this person's downfall? Now, I would love to take the credit for Steven Crowder's demise. Absolutely, I would. I mean, I would cherish it, as I do any major accomplishment in life. But unfortunately, I don't think it's that easy. I think the main contributor of who Steven Crowder became, meaning the wife-abusing trash that he is, is the culture of the church that Steven Crowder came from. Steven isn't secretive about his religious beliefs. He is a Christian, and like a real Christian. A Christian that abuses his wife and carries a gun. But the evangelical world was heavily involved in the cultivating of Crowder's ideology. He boasts about this constantly, and realistically the church has had a large part in cultivating a lot of the stars in the right-wing grifter network. But Crowder specifically has made a large amount of his image about his faith, even going so far as to sell a good amount of religious merchandise, just to further solidify his audience's place within the culture of the religious right. Doing so, Crowder creates the illusion of being on a certain team, and not just on a right-wing team, because first and foremost, he seems to claim to be part of a religious coalition before being a part of a political one. Because of this, Crowder's hardline stance on abstinence makes a lot of sense. After all, if you want to instantly win over a collective group of aging sexist old fucks, what better way than to call all the single women of America sluts and claim that you're not having sex because of Jesus? But despite all of these things, the loser formerly known as the prominent right-wing spokesperson Stephen Crowder is not entirely to blame for these things being the way that they are. He might not even be wholly to blame for the way that he viewed his relationship with his own wife. As we've spoken about here multiple times, purity culture, which really ramped up when Steven Crowder was growing up in the church as a little young Canadian racist, is a movement that largely targets younger people and their view on sexuality. It warps their view in such a way that they learn to fear sexuality more than they can learn to understand it. 
Under this view, it's more important to exert control over the youth of the nation than it is to understand them or even minister to them. This strategy has taken many forms, and for a more complete conversation about purity culture, you can revisit the purity culture series that we did a few months ago. The crux of purity culture is, though, that sexuality is a problem, and the solution to that problem is to allow men to hold as many of the cards as possible when it comes to equity within the relationship. Men are the heads of the household, men are the ones that do the courting of their spouse, and women are the ones that do the dirty work. Women are taught to submit sexually, emotionally, and financially, and not even just because these people claim that the household functions better under this view, but because they claim that God designed us to operate this way. And this is the reckoning that we need to come to terms with. Is the church going to be ready to truly take responsibility for the people like Crowder that have taken the movement of purity culture to its inevitable end? Are we willing to say once and for all that this attitude towards women is not of God? Because right now there are at least two people that Hillary Crowder thinks abuse her during her marriage. Stephen Crowder, and also Stephen Crowder's version of God. And the sad reality is that for every Stephen Crowder that we see in the news, there are thousands of nameless husbands enacting the same ruthless misogyny just without the audience to influence and without the public image to disgrace. And we have an obligation to those people. So yeah, Stephen Crowder, he is a little bitch. But so is the church, especially if they can't loudly put an end to this type of behavior. Thanks guys. I appreciate you watching, subscribe for more, and I love you all.